This is how I grew my TikTok to 30k converting followers. I also started a new TikTok account just to see how my knowledge is on TikTok and I was able to gain 1,000 followers within a week. Let's get to it. We're not just going to focus on followers. We're going to focus on converting followers. Followers that will convert into money rather than just accumulating so many followers with no value. The first tip on how to grow your TikTok for your business is knowing your who, your what and your why. Now let's get into it properly. Let's talk about your who first. This is because this is the bread and butter for your business. Honestly, once you're able to identify who your ideal client is, your business is going to grow as you grow. Honestly, you're going to end up getting consistent sales on your website because you're targeting the right audience. Now, in order for you to grow your TikTok, you need to be able to create content for your, your ideal clients. And let's break this down a bit more. When it comes to understanding who your ideal client is, you need to understand their demographics and their psychographics, their values and their challenges. Now, the demographics can be, for example, who they are, where they live, what they do, how much income they have. Now, this will give you a view of what their demographic is. If, for example, you're into beauty, you're selling makeup products, and you want to sell like lipsticks very vibrant colors and your target audience may be within a certain age range so they can be from like age 18 to like age 35 or age 40 depending on what your product is now once you're able to identify the age you need to understand the location where so where are they always at also what kind of social media do they use the most what do 18 year olds use what do like the 25 year olds use so you need to be able to understand this particular area once you're able to understand their demographics then you can move on into their psychographics and usually psychographics will consist of like their values their challenges like their pain points understanding what their value is some people's value may be i just want to look good even though i'm not feeling the best of the best now, once you're able to identify that all oh, my new clients they want to look good they're always smiling they're always out there especially for example if you're targeting the gen z's they are always like partying hard they're always on the move you can understand that okay the value is i just want to be happy i just want to do what works for me if i find a job very stressful i just want to leave it so that is what they value and you're going to look at like their challenges what are their challenges what are their pain points when it comes to your particular product so you're not going to look at your own product you're going to look at the overall for example if you've thought about a product you've actually thought about solving a pain point because nobody starts a product and they're not solving a pain point. You need to understand what your pain point is. For example, into like fashion, and you're thinking, okay, I wanna create like pieces for like five feet and five feet ladies. I wanna make them feel glamorous, even though they're petite, things like that. You've already found a pain point. Even though you have a pain point, this doesn't really determine your ideal client's pain point. You need to understand what their pain points are. So for example, I was talking to a friend recently about the business and I was asking them, what is your pain point when it comes to what you wear? And for petites, it's probably because sometimes they get a jeans and the jeans is, the jeans trousers is, is too long. They have to taper it. They have to cut it to fit. Like people forget that they exist. Things like that. You need to understand what their pain point. What are they currently struggling with that you want to be able to deal with? I know you're probably thinking, but what, how does that link to TikTok? Well, I'm going to tell you soon. Let's look from a coach perspective. So your coach and you're teaching people how they can launch their business. The pain point may be the stress and the struggle that you go through when it comes to launching your business. The fact that they're unsure about launching this business. The fact that they're having this imposter syndrome that is just behind their head that are they going to actually do well. This is usually the concerns and this is usually the struggles. What they struggle with is what you need to be able to identify. Once you have the list of your demographics, your psychographics and your ch the challenges, the values and what they actually like as well, then you're able to know the who. Now, moving on to the what. What are they gaining from you? What is this product going to do to me? What is your service going to offer me? You need to be able to have a clear description of what this is. One of my favorite books that I love reading is from by Donald, is it Donald Miller? I'm gonna put a picture on here. It basically just explains how you can identify what your what is. Like, what do you want to sell to your customer? What would they gain from what you're selling? You might think it looks good, 
But do you think that lip liner, even though there's a lot of lip liner in the market, do you think that lip liner will make them their lip like go bigger? Would the lip liner cinch their lips and make it smaller? What would they gain from your products? And that is your what. Moving away from your what, now we need to understand your why. Why do you think they need it? There are so many products out there with the overconsumption of products. Why do you think your product is necessary? Why do you think I need to buy your products? Like I already have so much products. What is your product going to do for me? And that is the message that you need to be able to pass when you're creating your TikTok. Now that we've explained what the war is, what the what is, and why do you think they need it, we now need to move on to the next step. By the way, if you have any more questions around ideal clients and the words, the struggles, or you need more examples, let me know in the comment section and I can create a more detailed video that focuses on just your audience and your ideal clients. The next step is your pillars. Now, pillars here is something I love, love to do. Like honestly, once I'm able to get my pillars in place, that's it, contents are rolling back and forth. Because you've been able to focus on your ideal clients and you've understood what is and why, your pillars are going to be easy to create. Now, when it comes to your pillars, pillars are the contents that you'll be focusing on on this, your new TikTok page. So if you, if you have an old TikTok, it doesn't really matter. But what you need to understand is what would I be posting on my TikTok for you to grow? Now, you now want to create what the pillars will be. And what these pillars will do is, firstly, it's going to reach the woo. It's also going to show them why, why do they need your product? And it's going to tell them what they will gain. So let's use a coach, for example, like a business coach. As a business coach, you've identified that your woo is people that want to be able to start a new business fast. People that want to set up their new business, launch their business in 30 days. And then your what, your what is based, going to offer them a very fast paced one-to-one -one chat where you can give them a step-by-step -step guide that will make them succeed when it comes to implementing those steps on launching their business. And then your why, why do you think they need it? One, you've been able to identify that they're really struggling when it comes to setting up their first business. They have imposter syndrome thinking, okay, am I going to do well with my first business? You've been able to identify all this. When it comes to your pillars, your pillars as a coach can be the first one, teaching them how to actually do it themselves. It's easier to just think that, oh, you want to start your TikTok and you don't want to give value. You have to give value and the value that you will be given is going to come in out from their struggles. We're going to look at the, what the struggles is. You can have videos on how to deal with imposter syndrome, convenient steps that you can take when it comes to setting up your Shopify. You can think, oh my gosh, I'm giving it all away. I'm giving us, trust me, even though you share any information, what people really want is the guide. People want the guide. People want something that someone that they can go to and hold their hands. You may think, oh, I'm sharing all of the information. You're not because you'll be so surprised that you have so many information that you couldn't even remember. But when it was time to creating your ebook or your videos, you've been able to download all of this information and help your customer. But if you're trying to shy away from helping or giving value, your TikTok account is this not going to grow. It is just going to be there with the 200 view jail and you're not going to move up. You could also do things like just showing the snippets of people that have sold out, people that you've actually trained, the feedbacks that they get. Obviously, this is what they will gain, which is showing them what you want to be in the future. So you, if you're able to add that onto your content and you're showing them like videos of people that have actually done this step-by-step -step guide with you, how much they have gained, how quickly they've literally sold out their products, that is also a value, even though it is actually your value that you're giving them. But you need to be able to have options where you're just giving them value without expecting anything. When it comes to the content creation around how to grow your TikTok, let's look at the product side. Maybe you are selling a lip liner. You can give value of how to use your lip liner, how to use other lip liners, even though you're selling lip liners, People that don't have your lip liner will be willing to watch you use other people's lip liners. 
And then when he sees how you use the lip liner or how good and efficient you are when it comes to lip lining, they trust you. Build this authority and you make them feel comfortable. And from there on, they can decide to purchase your own lip liner. Even though the first video that they saw you with was using somebody else's lip liner. We've spoken about the content that you can create, but let's talk about the types. There are something like storytelling, there are trends, and my favorite is storytelling. I love storytelling. If you follow me on TikTok, you will know that I do a lot of storytelling. And I'm not just doing storytelling because I want to do storytelling. I do storytelling because it is evergreen. Storytelling can last for years and years without anyone getting bored. Let's talk about trends first. When that happened in 2020 during that time where we are all indoors, that trend particularly, do you really see that trend anymore? No, you won't. But if you see a video, a storytelling video, taking you through the journey of how you started your lip liner business and what challenges you're going through, that story is going to be evergreen because that story is particularly aligned to you and it's not just a trend. And TikTok will continue to push that story even though the story is an old video. That is the good thing about storytelling. It is evergreen. It's like vlogs when you shoot vlogs on YouTube. Even though they're doing vlogs, people enjoy storytelling. A vlog from like five years ago, somebody else will watch a vlog from five years ago and still enjoy it because it's all about storytelling. When it comes to trends, I am not saying don't do trends do trends but you need to make sure that you're putting that authoritative content which is like the value content that i've shared earlier you're doing storytelling styles but the trends you need to limit the amount of trends that you do because you don't want to attract the wrong audience everybody does trend you might end up attracting audience that would never purchase your products if you keep doing trends every time and trends aren't very how they used to be those people that actually grow have loads of views through trends and things like that. I've already gained a mass like their wild followers from like previous years. So you should never, never, never compare somebody's old accounts with your new accounts because you might be thinking, oh, well, I saw this trend is having a million views. If I try it, it's going to do better. It might not because they have an old account. You're just starting. You need to be able to grow your audience to a specific type where even though you post a trend, they will eat that trend up. Another tip I need to share when you're creating content is I see a lot of fuzzy videos out there and I am like, please wipe your lens because there is nothing as worse as just not wiping your lens. You can use a cloth, a microfiber cloth. What I do is I have a wipes that I use as well. It's, it's like a disposable wipes and I just use it to wipe the back of your phone. You don't have to use a camera. I recently got this camera. This is my second or third video shooting with this camera. I've always used my phone and when I'm shooting on TikTok, I actually use my phone because I feel like it's so easy to just go on CapCut and make that edit. The next tip when it comes to this content creation is batch content. You need to be consistent when it comes to growing on TikTok. Honestly, especially in the beginning. When I started my TikTok account, I was posting here, there, here, there. It did not move an inch. I noticed that once you're consistent, you don't have to do three times a day. You honestly don't. For my new TikTok, I did not post three times a day. You don't need to do that. As long as you're consistent. And even my new TikTok, at one point, I just stopped posting. And that would tell if you stop posting. But when I was post posting consistently like once a day, I think I have about five videos or six videos on there or seven videos. It went well. It was so quick. I was able to amass followers. And, the reason, and not just followers, converting followers. It's really important to amass converting followers for your business. And this is me going on to the next one, which is do not follow the train. Don't go on follow by follow, follow me, I'll follow you. There is no point if you're a business because you're going to end up getting followed by people that are not going to even like or watch your content or even want to buy any of your products. When it comes to the posting time, the strategy that I use and I love to use is one to two times a day. And I do this by doing one very high quality video, which is more of value, which is more of storytelling, which may be very, very in depth and one mid quality video. My mid quality video may be like a CapCut template where I just put some videos together or maybe words on the screen so that I'm able to post twice a day. But you need to ensure that you're giving at least 
one value video but if you can only do one video per day then you should just stick to one high quality video using the steps that i provided previously if you want a video on how i actually create my storytelling content how i create my videos how i edit my videos on cap cards let me know in the comment section and i am more than happy to create one so what i really want to talk about is situation and i don't want you to think like within a week you're going to see magic it's not going to happen i was able to post consistently for one month and within that one month i got my 10k followers i had my tiktok account like almost a year before that and i was just going back and forth and i was only able to get like 200 followers or something like that like before then i had my bridal hair tiktok where i posed i was trying to pose but i think i only got about 300 followers on there it was a struggle so i decided to go back to my old tiktok and then i revamped it and i thought you know what i'm going to be consistent and i consistently posted for one month every day one post a day and within that one month i was able to go from 200 followers to 10,000 followers within a month so yes you can do it as long as you're consistent and you keep at it i don't want you to get burned out because i got burned out i'm not going to lie I got burned out because at one point I was posting three times a day and that burned me out. And so if you know that you cannot do three times a day, just do one time a day. Because when I got back into it, I focused on doing one time a day and I went from like 10K to 20K. So just do one time a day consistently and you see how quickly you would grow. Another tip is looking at your analytics. Analytics can be boring. However, they can actually do so much more. There is something on TikTok. I'm going to put it on here. You're going to click on it and it's going to take you to your popular videos. Just recreate those videos. Look at your popular videos and recreate the videos. Do them in a different style. Do them in a different angle. Maybe you created a relatable content with one of your popular videos. You can use that video and just change it to an educational content. You, I think there's an issue now where if you repost an old video, you get flagged. I'm not sure about that. But you can always change something in that video. You can always go back into CapCut add a new voiceover, edit it and repost the video. There are several ways that you can do if you're struggling with posting one time a day. And another thing that is really, really important, I have actually not been using for my TikTok, especially for my 30K account on TikTok. I've only gone live once or twice on there. However, whenever I go live, I see major difference with my follower count. Enjoy the process. Try not to get burnt out because there is no point getting burnt out you're just gonna hate it and you don't want to get to that point just take your time during the process but always remember what the purpose is behind when i start getting tired because right now this is my third video on you that i'm shooting right now i am tired but at the back of my mind i have a purpose on why i need to do this i need to do this because of a reason once you have a reason behind it i need to do this because i want to get to a certain milestone i need to do this because i want to be able to provide for my family i need to do this because i want to get to a stage where i can be independent financially once you're able to identify why you're doing it always have it at the back of your mind so when you're feeling like burnt out or when you're feeling tired or you're feeling discouraged because you're going to get discouraged you're going to be posting consistently and you're not going to see results for at least two three weeks but keep doing it honestly you're going to get there thank you so much for watching if you have any questions on this please let me know in the comment section and i am more than happy to create more videos around this and share my tips and tricks thank you so much again and i'll see you in the next one